Good morning, world. How you feeling out there, y'all? How are you feeling? There's a lot of continued craziness going on. Sometimes I just, I'm at a loss for words, you know? It's kind of hard to imagine, right? But it's true. When you see all the struggling, all the all the war making and all the killing, all the disregard and disrespect for life, all the justifications that we conjure up out of the stories that we tell ourselves so we can go on perpetuating all this pain and suffering. There's days and times where I just got nothing. Nothing at all. But we all just decided to jump up on here again today, man. So I want to welcome you all to another episode of Getting Stoned. With your host, Mr. Stone Petoskey, coming at you live from Mother Earth. I want to send prayers out there to everyone. Seems like every human being right about now could use some of that, some love, some compassion, some solidarity, you know, just some solidarity for what we, what we are and what we aim to be and where we're going and what we're doing and mm. I, I've never understood the need for all this kind of behavior that is on the front page all the time I mean from when I was a little little kid I could just be like I remember saying you know uh, Dad, why well, we gotta be killing each other? I don't know if there's an answer to that question other than to say that uh, it is what it is. Pretty much it's where I'm at with it all at this point in my life. It just is what it is. You wanna get out there and march in the streets? Have at it. I respect that. I honor that. Have at it. What I'm not so keen on is pointing fingers. Oh, hey, yo, no, 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 it's their fault. They're the bad people. We're the good people. It's their fault. If they were just good people, everything would be fine because we're good and they're bad. And then it just becomes this thing where it's like, well, who, who, like one side's pointing at the other side saying they're the bad guy. And I'm not, I don't know, man, like, who's right? You know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, the justifications come from both sides. And the wound is deep. I would propose that, from my perspective, being that we are one human family, always have been, always will be. In fact, we are one earth family. I, I, I've said many times that, you know, my brothers and sisters, uh, the soil and the rivers and the trees and, you know, the, the whales and the, the hummingbirds, those are, those, are, those are my brothers and sisters as much as my two-legged family is. So, yeah, I'm a little bit, you know, off the rails like that, I guess. Um, I know that's not a perspective or consciousness that the majority of my species uh, believes, but it's, it's what I believe, so it's how I roll. So I see all this fussing and fighting going on and all these bombs being dropped and all these innocent, basically just innocent human beings, wrong place, wrong time, just being put through so much pain and suffering. And it just, uh, yeah, obviously it's just heartbreaking. So I don't know what the solution is. Uh, some days I don't think there is one. Like I said, I think it just is what it is. Uh, what you can do is 
same thing, same thing that I can do is we live with love and in our heart. You know, we live with the perspective that I was just touching on is that it's all one. It's not two, y'all. There is no such thing. It is not two, despite the stories and delusions that swirl about in our minds. And so, uh, so the, the bit, nah, I don't know. I see it here. I don't even know what to say, y'all. Uh, so, so love one another. It's, it's, Sounds so cliche. It sounds so like, ah, oh gosh, I don't even know what. But in my mind, it's like you can't you can't get to peace through fighting. Just no, not. It's just not gonna work. I don't know who said it, but it's like, you know, fucking for virginity. You know, just. It's, it's an equation that never will add up. So, you know, you just bang our head against the wall time and time and time again, and then around and around we go, and uh, we cast dispersions towards one another based off of beliefs, whether they're political, whether they're social, whether they're religious, whether they're economic. We just come up with all kinds of stories and justifications to keep on killing. Crazy thing to me, and there's a whole lot of crazy things <laughs> about all this, no other animal does such, such things. Yeah, sure, we, you know, we eat each other. You know, that's just, to me, that's, that's just nature at work. You know, I don't know, I suppose, you know, you could argue that this, all this killing is just nature at work. All this warfare is just nature at work. It's just what humans do. And, you know, gosh, I don't know if I'd push back on too much of that because it sure seems to me like that's the case. But uh, I don't know, being, being a, being a, dude like I am who likes to think on all kinds of things it just seems to me like if we could just raise our consciousness up we could leave all this killing behind earth provides everything we could ever need it's paradise here it's a damn shame we can't just kind of come to that realization and just like look into each other's eyes and see our own soul reflected there Ah, uh, maybe someday, maybe someday. The future is unwritten, so I'm not a big fan of, of the concept called hope, as, as I've talked about. So I don't like how I don't really live in that space. Uh, I don't use that word. I know it's a super popular word. Everybody loves that word, you know. But it's just not. It's not in my vocabulary. But. Uh, I don't pretend to know what the future holds. I don't think anybody can can uh, can know that. So I would say keep your mind and your heart open to the, any and all possibilities. And one of those possibilities is that somehow, someday, some way, the dumbass motherfucking human being figures out a way to not fucking fight each other and have war going on. So, yeah. Anyways. I love all y'all. I thank you so much for taking your time to drop on by and give a listen to what old Stone here is just laying down. The groove, the vibe, the rhythm and the rhyme. Yes, beyond space and time. Life is sublime and divine. Stop your whining and start dining in the beauty that is all around. Look deep within, there it is found. A life created from a sound. Boo! We all come from the one earth mother. There is no other. 
stare into the eyes and discover your brother and your sister. You hear what I'm saying, mister? Mmm. Take a big old drink. Pause all the noise in your mind and stop to think. What am I doing here? Why am I living in fear? Why can't I just wrap my arms around another and hold them oh so close and dear? Mm. Yes, yes, y'all. Uh, all right. So let's uh, let's just read a little something here. I'm not sure where I'm going with this today, but uh, we'll just be in the moment. It's kind of where I most prefer to live. We're gonna read uh, read a little uh, something from a from a cat named Hubert Shelby Jr. And uh, I don't know, there's something about this little piece I really I really identify with, so I thought I'd share it with all y'all. It's called "Why I Continue to Write." I started writing because I wanted to do something with my life before I died. I still do. I went into the hospital in 1946 with advanced tuberculosis and altogether I spent three and a half years in the hospital. By the time I got out, I had had 10 ribs removed, one lung collapsed, a piece of the other one removed, and there was some severe complications from an experimental drug that was used to keep me alive. During these years, I was given up for dead several times. One doctor told me that I could not live, I just didn't have enough lung capacity, and I should just go home and sit quietly and I would soon be dead. Now, I am blessed with a rotten attitude, and my response to statements of this nature is, fuck you, no one tells me what to do. Anyway, I was sitting at home and had a profound experience. I experienced in all of my being that someday I was going to die and it wouldn't be like it had been happening. Almost dying, but somehow staying alive. But I would just die. And two things would happen right before I died. I would regret my entire life and I would want to live it over again. This terrified me. The thought that I would live my entire life, look at it, and realize I blew it. This forced me to do something with my life. This did not make me a writer, but provided the incentive to discover that I am a writer. I wrote every night after work, struggling to learn how to write. And at the end of six years, last exit to Brooklyn was finished. In 1964, thanks to Barney Rossett and others at Grove Press, last exit became a huge success. There were interviews, articles, photographs, all manner of publicity, positive and negative, and it was all very intimidating. What was frightening was the responsibility I was aware of this at the time, but in retrospect, I can see that it was relatively easy to write when no one knew I was alive. The world had no expectations. But when the world is watching you, and you believe in your heart that you are really worthless, and someday they will find out, the pressure is unbearable. I simply withdrew into a shell and didn't write for six years. And then I began writing again. Since last exit, I have published five books and my life has gone through many changes. In 1988, the movie version of Last Exit once again brought a lot of attention. This was followed by more obscurity, broken occasionally by my association with Henry Rollins. The strange thing about all this is that I'm still here and periodically I publish another book. Unfortunately, a great deal of my energy is expended in not just staying alive, which doesn't leave 
much for the other things. Yet I do keep writing whenever possible. Writing, like any art, is a continuing process of discovering the infinite possibilities of life. A blank piece of paper can be terrifying. It can also be exciting when ideas, images, and sounds come together and sing off the page. For me, there is no other experience like it. When I just touch the keyboard, a part of me comes to life that at one time I did not know existed. Being an artist doesn't take much, just everything you got. Which means, of course, that as the process is giving you life, it is also bringing you closer to death. But it's no big deal. They are one and the same and cannot be avoided or denied. So when I totally embrace this process, this life death, and abandon myself to it, I transcend all this meaningless gibberish and hang out with the gods. It seems to me that that is worth the price of admission. Amen to that, Brother Shelby. Amen to that. Mm, that is some, that is some deep, delicious, delightful, and delectable down home dinner right there. Mr. Hilbert Shelby Jr., ladies and gentlemen. And that last exit to Brooklyn story, by the way, I strongly suggest you go on and grab yourself a copy of that book and dive on in. And as for the life that you are here to live, I say, get on about it. Because the Grim Reaper is one day gonna come on knocking. Oh, yes, 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 y'all. I'm just gonna pause for a minute and I'm gonna say, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to pause and I want you to just take a breath. feel your heart beating. And what a miracle a heartbeat is. Moving the blood through the body, keeping us alive. Know you are beautiful. Know you are lovable. No, you are a miracle. No, you are that. All right, let's, uh, what do you say? What do you say? Let's do a little tune here. I've, I've been like resisting this one for a while, but I just decided today, you know what? Forget about it. I'm just going to try it. If I just make an absolute mess of it, then so be it. But, uh, I want to I give it a shot anyways. Um, I thought I was going to like practice or rehearse it a little bit, but I said, you know what? No, man. Just just go for it. So that's what we're going to do. You know how it is. I don't, I don't make no apologies here. It's just uh, you come to listen. I bring my, my, my whole self without, without any sort of, um, you know, walls. Just try to be as pure as I can be and vulnerable and, and just just share that that you know that tenderness if you will that's a part of every single one of us whether we had,
acknowledge it or admit it or not. So it's a song, uh, it's a U2 song, it's called Running the Standstill. <clears throat> stress here man this is it this is it this is just fun we're having so so she woke up woke up from where she was lying still she said I I gotta do something about where we're going. Stepped on a steam train, stepped out of the drive. Black belly of 
clouds and the rain through a doorway she brings me white and gold and pearl stolen from the sea she's raging she's raging and the sun blows up in her eyes she wheels up by the window chill She's rolling the stone steel. Oh, boy. Mm. that little uh, Stone Potosky rendition of a classic song from YouTube. Um, Bottle on the Edge and Larry and Adam. Yeah, the um, obviously uh, I don't want to say that's an incredible band. They've written some amazing songs. That song is, is one of my favorites of theirs. So thank you, fellas. Thank you for bringing your art, your words, your sounds to this world. Uh, it certainly has made it a, a brighter place. Oh, all right now, here's the thing, y'all. Here's the thing. I want you to wrap your arms around yourself, just like this. Come on, come on, come up on in there. Don't hold back. This ain't no time for fooling. This is the real, real deal right now. And you're gonna give yourself a hug. And you're gonna mean it. You're gonna fucking mean it, okay? So wrap your arms around yourself like this. And if you got someone with you, like you wrap your arms around each other, all right? I want you to come together right now and hug it, hug it out. Come on. Now I ain't playing. This is like a real, real deep, down, dirty, just from the essence of who we are kind of hug. That's what we're doing right now. And we're gonna feel, we're gonna feel each other. We're gonna feel all our atoms, all our cells, all of our essence. We're gonna feel it swirling together. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do right now. So come on, get in there, squeeze. Mm. Just like that. Just like that. Mm. Mm. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. We need a whole hell of a lot more of that right there. Hugging, loving, smiling you you choose to bring that to the world how about that that's how, that's what we do that's how we wrestle with all of this this noisy world that's so oh is we just we just bring all that energy and we just felt from that hug and we just whoo how it goes into the world just moves through each and every sentient being. Mmm. Feel it, y'all. You can feel it if you if you if you really if you really just settle in. I know. I know it's true. You can feel it. Every single last one of us. 
that's there inside of us, a seed of goodness, of joy, of compassion, of empathy. It's in there. Water it. Water that motherfucking seed, y'all. Sprinkle water on it every day. Let it grow, let it bloom, let it shine. Elevate. You are a miracle. You are divine. I'm so thankful that you took your time to, 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 to be here with me. It is immensely appreciated. I love all y'all. Until next time, this is Storm Badaski saying, peace out.